Tired of the everyday routine? Ever dream of a life of romantic adventure? Want to get away from it all? Escape! Designed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. Tonight we escape to a lonely schooner sailing through the hot Caribbean night. Carrying a fortune and the heedless passions of reckless men. As John and Gwen Bagney tell it in their exciting tale, The Sure Thing. This way, senor. Thank you. If you would please wait in here in the president's office. Fine. You understand, senor, I have not the authority to handle the matter myself. Yes, of course I understand. You see, a bank draft of two million dollars. It is a matter of such importance. Senor Jose Perez, the president of the bank, he is the only one. That's perfectly all right. I'll wait for senor Perez. Gracias, senor. Gracias. Wait. Yes, I could wait. I'd come this far, I could afford a few more minutes. And I'd wanted to think about it, to roll it over in my mind, just as you roll a fine liqueur over your tongue to enjoy the full realization of it. It was hard to believe. Just a short while ago, I had been ship's doctor on the SS Martina, the gilded ferry boat of the Caribbean. And now, <laughs> I sat back in a comfortable chair and went over the whole thing again in my mind, just the way it happened from the beginning. We had just cleared the Straits of Yucatan on our way to Havana when the 23-word message came that started the whole thing. Same thing, Doc. SOS, latitude 23 north, longitude 85 west. Accident case on board schooner Sidon en route to Havana. Urgently need doctor. Can you uh, board us? Is that all? No answer as to the type of injury? I don't get it, Doc. She's laying two just not to starboard, and they still keep sending the same message. Life force ready, Doctor. Coming. Got all your gear? All set. Let's go. As a rule, I don't excite easily, but I was hanging on to my little black bag like an intern on his first ambulance case. Maybe it was the hour, the gray hour at sea that is suspended between day and night. As we pulled away from our ship, I could just barely make out the schooner heeling to a wandering current. She was a 42-footer, and from her high bow, she sloped away neatly in a sweeping sheer line to a trim, square stern, the Sidon. The name seemed to fit her, aloof and aristocratic. We pulled alongside. That the doctor? Yes, give us a hand, will you? All right, men, ship your oars. Steady, doctor. You on board here, take my bag. Olson, give me a hand with a stretcher. Right. Watch your step there. Yeah, easy. Yeah, thanks. Well, there we are. Now, where's the patient? He's below. What'd you bring the stretcher for? Who are you? I'm the owner. Felix Arouge is the name. You can't take him off this boat. He's too weak. I'll decide that. Come on, Olson. Come on, Doc. We went below. The main cabin was lined in Honduras mahogany. Everything was custom-built, even the galley that we passed through on our way to the stateroom forward, where I found my patient, an old man, and uh, with him, a girl. Oh, Doctor, I'm so glad you're here. Joseph. Joseph. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Joseph, the doctor, he's here. Oh, Doctor, thank heaven. Easy now, easy. You'll be all right. Doctor, he had an accident. He's... Terribly ill. I've been so worried. Please. Mm-hmm. Bad shock. Pulse pretty low. You're not going to take him away, are you? No way. No. No, I can't. Oh, easy now. Have you enough oil aboard to reach Havana if the wind doesn't hold? Yes, I think so. Okay. Olson. Yeah, Doc? You go on back. This man's in no condition to be moved. What about you? I'll meet the ship in Havana. We ought to be in there sometime tomorrow. But the skipper... Thinks... I'll take the responsibility. Okay. You're the doctor. All right, let's have a look here. Oh. Easy now. Oh. Who bandaged him? I did. You did a good job. Oh, she oh, no, don't try to talk. How long has he been this way? Two days. Two days? The wound, Doctor, I'm afraid it's... Yes, it's a nasty one. Deep and infected. Who did the surgery on him? 
surgery? Who probed for the bullet. Bullet? There was no bullet. He was injured while splicing a backstay with a marlin spike. He was what? You see, he was carrying the marlin spike in his hand when Felix had to come about unexpectedly. It threw him off balance and he fell. Hand me my bag. What's the matter? You're like a parrot I used to own. Your sea talk is too glib. It's the truth, I tell you. I've dug out too many bullets not to recognize the kind of mess they make. It was a marlin spike. Yes, well, you can yell marlin spike all the way to Havana, but it isn't going to change my report. Report? No, no bullet. Uh, marlin spike. Lie back now. Marlin. This won't hurt. Uh, what? Just a hypodermic. No, 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 dope, I don't want it. But I've got to probe. You can't take it if you're conscious. No, anesthetic. Only brandy. Doctor, give him the anesthetic. Oh, no. You'd like that, wouldn't you, Stephanie? You're out of your mind, Joseph. I just want to save you the pain and the doctor... Get him the brandy. But, doctor, It's his body. If that's what he wants, that's the way he'll have it. Now get the brandy. Oh, thank you. And, doctor... Yes? Send Stephanie away. Don't wander around me. She went away, but she didn't like it. And I got to work. The old man didn't say a word all the time I probed. He just moaned and gritted his teeth. I found the bullet all right, and then I powdered the wound with sulfur and bandaged it. I could see I'd have my hands full just to keep him together until we got to Havana. For the next couple of hours, I was pretty busy, and it was well after 10 o'clock when I felt it was safe to leave him and go up on deck to catch a smoke. Halfway up the companionway, I ran into Felix Arouge on his way down. I hadn't got a good look at him when I first came aboard, but now I did. Heavy, dark, bony face with a black mole on his cheek, fine flannel slacks rolled to his knees, and for a belt, a gaudy necktie. Against the polished brass and teak deck of the schooner, he was as incongruous as a herring in caviar. Well, Doc, how's the old boy? Is he going to kick off? I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I think he's going to be all right. You think, or do you know? I'm only a doctor. I've done everything I can for him. Yeah, wait a minute. Where are you going? I want to see him. i got to talk to him. I wouldn't advise it. That's when are you giving the orders around here? Since I came aboard. I don't want him disturbed. He needs to rest. Yeah. You got any objections if I get myself a cup of coffee? No, so long as you stay away from my patient. Oh, oh I didn't hear you come up. You handle the wheel like an old salt. Oh, I don't know much about it. I just do what Felix tells me. How's Joseph? You've been down there such a long time, I thought that maybe... That he died? What a horrible thing to say. Of course not. Who is Joseph? Your husband? No, I'm his secretary. Oh, then this is a business trip. In a way. Doctor, what are you getting at? Did you shoot him? Why would I shoot him and then call for a doctor out here in the middle of the ocean? I don't know, and after tomorrow, I won't care. You realize, of course, my report to the authorities in Havana will be according to my own findings. I suppose so. May I have a cigarette? Oh, certainly. Here you are. Thank you, I have a light. I uh, don't imagine there's any way of changing your mind. Is there, doctor? <laughs> this is a beautiful schooner. Belong to your boss? Yes. I wonder, uh, you mind if I take the wheel for a while? It's been a long time since... Oh, you know how to sail? Yeah, I used to back in Maine. All right, go ahead. Hmm, feels good. Yeah, she sure handles like a dream. Uh-huh, just as I thought. What's wrong, Doctor? We're not headed for Havana. We're headed in the opposite direction. <laughs> The Sidon was racing along with sails full, but she wasn't sailing due east to Havana. The compass said she was sailing southwest, away from Havana as fast as wind and sail could take her. I laid her on the starboard tack and started to bring her about. The sails bellied out, catching the wind as it shifted across the bow. And then as they started to fill away, the mainmast boom swung over. Just as I ducked to avoid it, a shot rang out. I put up my hand to steady myself against the main boom. And there in the wood, right where my head would have been if I hadn't ducked, was the bullet. Across the deck, silhouetted in the light of the companionway, stood Felix, polishing his gun with a handkerchief. You 
shouldn't tack, Doctor, when a man's cleaning his gun. Cleaning your gun in the dark in the middle of the night? I suppose it is dangerous. I say you don't like our course. I was under the impression this craft was bound for Havana. That's right, Doc. We are. Then why are we sailing southwest? Southwest? <laughs> That's a woman for you. Can't trust them behind the wheel of a car, and they're no better behind the wheel of a boat. Oh, no, Felix. You don't blame me for that. I don't know anything about a course. I did what you told me. Then why didn't you do it right? If I'm so incompetent, maybe you'd better handle it yourself. Maybe I will. As the Sidon pushed its way through the serenity of the night, carrying with it an incredible tension, I didn't know what their game was. The lies, the marlin spike, nocturnal gun cleaning, change of course, who they were or what they meant to each other, but one thing was certain. I intended to get to Havana if it was the last thing I ever did. And to make sure it wasn't the last thing, this was one night I wouldn't sleep. I went down to the old man's stateroom where I'd left my bag to get some Benzedrine. While I was there, I checked on him. Considering his age, he had a lot of stamina. He was sleeping quietly. He wouldn't need me. I opened the bag, took the tablets, and suddenly my hand stopped in midair. My hypodermic needle, loaded with the anesthetic that Joseph had refused, was gone. In just a moment, we will return to Escape. But first, we keep reminding you that this fall, you'll hear them all on CBS. But there's one Sunday night show that makes you think constantly that it's spring. It's the show that brings you the hilarious adventures of that capricious teenage charmer, Corliss Archer. Youth and love and a definite springtime madness well up in Corliss's adventures every Sunday night. Bewitching, bothering, and bewildering her parents, the neighbors, her teachers, and her boyfriends. For a show that's filled to the brim with charm and good humor and very funny adventure, meet Corliss Archer every Sunday night on most of the same CBS network stations. Tune in, tune in this fall for the shows that you love best of all. Listen carefully, here's the address. It's CBS, CBS. And now back to Escape and the second act of The Sure Thing. My hypodermic needle, loaded with the anesthetic that Joseph had refused, was gone. I tore the bag apart, took everything out, but it wasn't there. It wasn't anywhere in the stateroom. One of them had stolen it. Why? to use on the old man? On me? I went back up on deck. Felix was at the wheel. I knew it was futile to ask him if he'd taken my needle. What's the matter? Can't you sleep? Or are you still worried about the course? Say we're sailing due east. Very commendable. Mind if I take the wheel a while? No, I don't mind at all. But keep it due east, Doctor. I want to get to Havana. I watched his truculent broad back as he moved across the deck and disappeared below. The moon was as bright as day and as reassuring. It drove the worry of the missing hypodermic needle away from the front of my mind. It was good to be alone, to feel the sure swiftness of the boat under my feet. This was something to cling to. This was reality. Every knot closer to Havana. The sail swung out, covering the moon, throwing everything into blackness. That's why I didn't realize at first anyone was approaching until I saw the glow of the cigarette. I tensed myself. My hand clutched at something in the cockpit. It was a wrench. The cigarette moved closer. I waited. The sail bellowed back and I saw her, full in the moonlight. There was strength and defiance in the way she held her footing against the wind, but... There was no defiance in her voice. I have to talk to you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, talk. I'm afraid I haven't been very honest with you. No, I'm afraid you haven't. I lied to you, and I realize now how foolish it was, but... Doctor, I'm afraid of Felix. Are you trying to tell me it was Felix who shot the old man? Yes, and he made me lie about it. Like you lied about the course? 
You'll never get to Havana. He's letting you think that you're getting there now, but he'll figure out something. Yeah, I'm sure he will, if that target practice a few moments ago was any sample. Oh, he wasn't trying to kill you. Felix wouldn't kill you now, not as long as Joseph needs you. I, I mean... <laughs> you know, you're not making sense again. Felix wants me to keep Joseph alive, and yet Felix shot Joseph. It was just in a fit of anger, an argument. Felix has a terrible temper. Why, he'd be a fool to kill Joseph. He... What makes Joseph so valuable? Hmm? I suppose I should tell you all of it. Well, that might be a good idea. I told you the truth about one thing, at least. I am his secretary. Only his name isn't just Joseph. It's Joseph Ingram. Ingram? No wonder his face was familiar. He's, he's the big aviation tycoon. Yeah, but look, Ingram was killed two weeks ago. I read about it in the papers. A transcontinental airplane crashed into a mountain. <laughs> yes. Even fate works for him. We were on our way to Washington. He'd been subpoenaed to have his war contracts investigated. Oh, the public was really worked up about it. He was a cinch to be indicted. Why, even his own wife left him after 20 years of marriage. But as luck would have it, we got off the plane at Albuquerque to answer a wire from his attorney. But the radio and the newspapers obituaried him to death. I know, that's how things happened for him. Apparently, there, there was just no record of us leaving the plane, and they only found half the survivors, and some of those they couldn't identify. Now, go on. Well, when Joseph realized that he was officially dead... He saw the way out. He phoned Felix in Florida to have the sitting ready, and we took a train down and boarded her there. Yeah, I see, but I don't... Well, un... why do you think I'm on this boat? Do you think I wanted to come? Do you think I wanted to leave my whole life behind? I was forced to come. I was the only one who knew that Joseph was still alive. And now you know. Uh, what about Felix? Oh, Felix, he does odd jobs, as it were, for Joseph and... Joseph owns Felix, body and soul, just as he owns everyone who works for him. And, uh, you? I was ambitious. I ought to hate Joseph, but it's not his fault. I saw a chance to go further with him than with any other man. Only I'd known how it would end. Running away from everything. Always to be afraid. Well, if that's it, then I was wrong. Then maybe the needle isn't meant for Joseph. Needle? What needle? The hypodermic needle loaded with anesthetic. It's missing from my bag. If it isn't meant for Joseph or for me, it's meant for you. Oh, no. Oh, no. He, he can't. He wouldn't. I'm afraid <laughs> we'll have to be more realistic. We? If you'll forgive the pun, I'm afraid we're both in the same boat. There was desperation on her face, and I felt sorry for her. She was in this mess up to her neck, and she was afraid. And yet it was good having her beside me there in the cockpit. It was pleasant to be with her. Just the two of us, and the moon and the sea. Well, anyway, the hypodermic needle was the farthest thing from my mind when I took her in my arms. And then it happened. I felt the stinger that pierced my flesh. Stuck the needle! You... What are you talking about? The needle. You stuck me with it. Needle? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it was just my brooch. It's always coming open. Uh, brooch? I, I thought... Silly. Can you pass me for me, will you please? Yeah, sure, yes, of course. Why, well, you're shaking. Well, it's that missing hypodermic. It has me rattled. I've got to get it back. You'll get it back? Yes, but when? How? Right now, Doctor. Like this. <laughs> She used the needle deftly, and one motion plunged it in my arm. I tried to struggle to my feet. Her face was mocking me. I grabbed for her, but the drug was warm and deadening. And after a blurred moment, I was gone. Can't you ever do anything right? You stupid fisherman! I could hear them from a long ways off. I came to slowly, and then I lay there listening. Bungled it again. I only did what you told me to do. You're the one who's bungled it. It's a good thing I caught you before you They were you both standing over me, I working on me, doing everything they could to bring needle. me to. Now you've spoiled everything. You. Why did you have to rush things? You want to know where the money is, don't you? Well, you haven't found out, and now maybe you won't. If you'd left Joseph alone. Oh, but no, no, you couldn't wait. As soon as the doctor was unconscious, you had to work him over. 
If Joseph dies out, we'll never find out where he hid it. It's on this boat, I know that. And I didn't hurt him, I just pushed him around a little. Oh, that stupid temper of yours, that awful impatience. You'd think you could have waited for two million dollars. Two million dollars. Now it began to make some sense. Now everything made sense. As long as Joseph needed a doctor and wouldn't tell where the money was, we both lived. But if I couldn't keep him alive... Get on your feet, Doc. Come on, come on, Doc. Get on your feet. Felix, easy. Since when are you getting so touchy? Now, come on, come on. All right, all right. I'm on my feet. Welcome back, Doc. Now get below. The old man needs you. He's had a relapse. Stephanie, take the wheel. I said get below, Doc. Not in the mood to take orders. Maybe this will put you in the mood. Creased my chin with a short jab. My knees buckled. I swung at him and missed. I saw another one coming. This time I ducked and connected with a roundhouse on the side of his head that sent him reeling along the wet, narrow deck. I started after him, just as the boat came about violently, heeling over with her scuppers awash. I wildly grabbed a guy line just in time to see Felix thrown Ah! backwards into the sea. I whipped around. The girl had done it, spinning the wheel like crazy. I dashed back to the cockpit and tried to grab it away from her. She fought me like a tiger, but I finally pushed her off, right at the boat, and put her about. But Felix was nowhere in sight. We tacked around, searching for him, but it was useless. Well, he's gone. You killed him. It was an accident. You ought to be glad he's gone. Why? Well, it was... Either him or you. (laughs) Your concern touches me. Besides, we don't need him, don't you see? You know how to handle a boat, and you're a doctor. You can keep Joseph alive until we make him talk. And when we find out where his money is, we can get rid of him. And And sail away into the sunset, huh? That's right. Just you and me. (laughs) Yeah. No, thanks. I'll play out the original hand in Havana. I don't think so, Doctor. I'm setting the course now. And if you're interested, I'm a much better shot than Felix. I won't hit the boom. The gun glittered in the moonlight, and she was smiling at me. But I wasn't looking at her, but beyond her. At first, I wasn't sure. I just sensed the movement. And then I saw him. Joseph Ingram, barefooted and in pajamas, pulling himself painfully up the companionway, forcing his body to make the effort. Joseph! You... you wanted too much, Stephanie. My money and Felix's you. Felix is gone. He had an accident. Uh, Like mine, I suppose. If only I hadn't been so greedy. If only you'd waited... You'd have gotten your share. Joseph, you're sick. You are such a little fool, Stephanie. In the heel of my shoe is a draft on the National Bank of Venezuela for two million dollars, payable to bearer. So that's where it is. Thank you, Joseph. That's very generous of you. I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't been watching. A bullet in the stomach, yet he kept coming at her, lumbering barefooted across the deck like a wounded bear in blue silk pajamas. Not so easy. She backed away from him, emptying her gun at him, but he kept coming. Not so easy. She was at the edge of the deck as he collapsed against her, his heavy arms in a death grip around her. And like a cartwheel, they spun together over the side into the inky blackness of the sea. Two million dollars in the heel of a shoe. It was in the heel of the shoe, all right. I went below and found it. Just a piece of paper that three people had died over. Two million dollars, certified backwards and forwards, payable to bearer. In just a few hours, it would be daylight. I could be in Havana by noon. Back to the Martina. Back to the dispensary. Back to the endless round of seasick pills, hangover remedies, and when I'm lucky, maybe a sprained ankle. Or Venezuela. The choice was simple. There was no risk at all. It was a cinch. It was a sure thing. It was payable to bearer. Good 
Good afternoon, senor. I am sorry I have kept you waiting. Uh, you presented this bank draft for payment, senor? Yes. Are uh, you, senor Perez? That is right. I am the president of the bank. Uh, this draft, uh, it is quite a large sum. Well, there's nothing wrong with the draft, is there? Uh, no, senor. It is in order. Good. And you wish us to transfer this money to your bank in the United States? No, no. As a matter of fact, I wish to open an account here. But certainly. Gomez, you will make the arrangements for the senor. Oh, si, senor Perez, at once. And uh, now, uh, there is a lady, a countrywoman of yours, waiting to see you. Please, step this way, senor. To see me? But who? Oh, Joseph, I've been waiting so long. Senor Perez, is this the man who presented the draft for payment? Si, senor. But he isn't... Then what's happened to Joseph? Who? Joseph Ingram, of course. Senor Perez, who is this woman? What is she doing here? Well, I heard the Sidden had come in this morning with only one person aboard, so I rushed right here to the bank. But you've cashed the draft. What have you done? Killed Joseph for it? Look, madam, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Just who are you, anyway? I'm Joseph Ingram's wife. Mrs. Ingram? But then... Well, surely you know he died in that plane crash back in the States. He didn't, and you know it. Joseph wasn't on that plane. He boarded the Sydney in Florida. Now, look, madam, all the newspapers Joseph and made I it... planned the whole thing. Those highly publicized statements about our divorce were just a cover-up. He was to meet me here with the money. And I know he would have if he were still alive. Senor Perez, will you call the police? I accuse this man of murdering my husband. Si, senor, I once. didn't kill him. She killed him. She? Stephanie, his secretary. And where is she? She's dead, too. He killed her. Oh, that doesn't make any sense. Where is Felix Arouge? Well, you see, Felix, he was killed when he... Yes? Well, you see, it was like... I stopped. They were staring at me. They didn't believe me, of course. Who would ever believe me? But it had seemed like such a sure thing. And it was murder, payable to bearer. Escape is produced and directed by William N. Robeson. Tonight we have presented The Sure Thing by John and Gwen Bagney. Featured in the cast were John Hoyt as the doctor, Bill Conrad as Felix Arouge, Faye Baker as Stephanie, and Ian Wolfe as Joseph Ingram. Also heard were Don Diamond, Ted DeCorsia, and Sarah Selby. Special music was arranged and conducted by Del Castillo. Next week... You're within a few days of your release after eight years of horror on the prison island of New Caledonia. But between you and final freedom stands the love of a beautiful girl and the monstrous figure of Monsieur Denou, the official executioner. Next week, we escape with John Russell's terrifying story, The Red Mark. Good night, then, until the same time next week, when once again we offer you Escape! <laughs> A whole family of top Hollywood stars waits to entertain your family every Sunday on CBS. It's on the Family Hour of Stars, heard over most of these same CBS stations. A half hour of top entertainment, romance, comedy, or drama, starring Irene Dunn, Ronald Coleman, Loretta Young, Dana Andrews, Kirk Douglas, and Jane Wyman in turn. Your whole family will enjoy the Family Hour of Stars Sunday on CBS, where this fall you'll hear them all. Stay tuned now for Sing It Again, which follows immediately over most of the same CBS stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.